I'm a research scientist in acoustics and psychoacoustics, which uh, focuses on research related to the perception and measurement of sound quality. As senior fellow, I work for a corporate research group called Harman X, uh, which conducts research on new technologies and knowledge to help improve the sound quality of our products in consumer, professional, and automotive spaces. So my career as an audio scientist sort of took this circuitous route, uh, starting as a musician uh, to recording engineer and then a scientist in, in the field of sound reproduction. So I studied out studying classical music at the university uh, where I was record, uh, I participated in recordings and uh, hung around engineers. So audio was a big, a big hobby at that time. That led to an interest in recording. So I went off to McGill University, got a degree uh, in sound recording. And then I met a guy named Dr. Floyd Toole who uh, was a scientist in loudspeakers and uh, measurement of and perception of loudspeakers. He got hired at Harman uh, 20, 30 years ago, and I continued my research with him here at Harman, uh, focused on loudspeakers and headphones. The Audio Engineering Society is the largest uh, international uh, society dedicated solely to uh, audio science and engineering. Uh, it has approximately 12 to 13,000 members worldwide, and it includes uh, audio engineers, scientists, students, educators, and people involved in the production of sound and music. Uh, as a student, as a graduate student, I joined back in the uh, mid-1980s, and it was the, the best way to uh, meet people and just learn uh, new knowledge about the field. Uh, so I, I immediately became uh, very active, uh, held a number of positions until 2013. I was elected as the president of the society and uh, continued working with them for five years. So because it's solely dedicated to the science and art of audio, it's, it's the place where I go for peer review, uh, critical critiques, and di disseminating all the research that we've done at Harman. So, all of our research has pretty well been uh, published in the Audio Engineering Society and it continues to be a, an important uh, part of our research and, and the work we do here at Harman. So in 2012, we began this multi-year project focused on the perception of measurement of headphone sound quality. And over the course of the next uh, six to seven years, we conducted uh, multiple controlled listening experiments involving dozens of headphones, hundreds of listeners, both trained and untrained, uh, throughout the world. And the focus was to identify what is it about a headphone that people like, what do they perceive, and then finally to come up with a measurement of, of what sound quality is so that we can rely, reliably measure and test headphones and design them for optimal sound quality. So that's uh, the culmination of that project was we, we identified a target curve or frequency response that uh, the more closely you, you hit that target, the more people will prefer it. Uh, so we have a way to measure a headphone, predict how it's going to sound, and, and now we, we understand how to optimize every headphone we make so that it, it, it achieves optimal sound. The best indicator of a balanced listening experience and the overall sound quality is the frequency response measurement of the headphone. In fact, this is uh, such a good predictor of sound quality that we can predict the listener's rating, the sound quality rating, based on the frequency response alone with about 86% accuracy. Uh, the more that the frequency response deviates from the AKG reference target curve, uh, the less people will uh, prefer it and give it a lower rating. In the next few years, immersive audio is going to play an increasingly important role. Uh, immersive audio means that sound will uh, come from all around you, from in front of you, the sides, the rear, the height, even possibly the bottom. And what is happening is that these, these new immersive audio formats, their object-based audio, uh, include Atmos, DTSX, uh, MPEG H, Sony 360 reality systems. Uh, these, these are all formats that increasingly people are authoring 
content in. And most importantly, a lot of this content is being uh, streamed. So unlike 10, 20 years ago, where it was all disk-based, this, this immersive content will follow you in the cloud wherever you are. And I think that will be a big enabler. Uh, so with this content, you'll be able to enjoy it in the car, uh, at home through headphones, through sound bars, or, or even through a, 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 an elaborate uh, 7.4, uh, 7.1.4 loudspeaker system. So I think you're going to see a lot of uh, new products that uh, support these new formats. And uh, that's, that's going to be a, a big factor, I think, in, in future products. Over the next five years, uh, I think headphones are going to become increasingly better sounding uh, based in part on the research that we've done, uh, which we've published. Uh, I see more and more uh, convergence in the industry uh, and agreement on what constitutes a good sounding headphone and how to design it. Uh, we'll also see the, this new uh, category called a hearable which may include a, uh, a hearing aid or some technology that you can buy over the counter that will account for your hearing and compensate for it. We'll also see more and more personalization, a headphone that better fits you and uh, can be adjusted to uh, match your preference and sound quality. It could also include a set of filters known as head-related transfer functions, which are basically filters uh, based on your hearing anatomy, the shape and size of your ears, that will provide important cues to give you a, an enhanced spatial sense of uh, the, this new immersive audio, audio category. Uh, I think you'll also see sensors more and more being put in headphones to monitor your health and perhaps give you feedback uh, on your health. And, uh, and yeah, and I think the headphones that provide immersive playback, of course, will be all part of this. The immersive audio will shape the listener's experience in important ways. For example, uh, we've experienced immersive audio up until now in films and uh, in cinemas. Uh, you, you hear actors uh, you know, across the stage, you hear sound effects behind you, above you, you hear planes flying overhead but uh, you're going to be experiencing that this with music now. So there'll be a sense of heightened realism, uh, a sense of suspension of disbelief, and it will enhance the emotional uh, experience of, of music. Uh, it, it will be like being in a live concert. And uh, I think once people experience it, there's, there's no looking back. So the K300 series is the first professional headphone on the market that uh, incorporated all of this research conducted on headphone sound quality over the past seven years. Uh, it, uh, for example, the K371 has been, uh, had wide and critical acclaim among professionals as well as consumers. And uh, it's all, it, it, it hits this target curve, it sounds great, and it's all uh, accomplish at, at a very reasonable price point of uh, under $150. So uh, I think it, it was designed to emulate the experience of listening to a, a pair of professional monitors, a pair of accurate professional monitors in a, in a calibrated listening experience. So the nice thing is you can go from headphones to monitors and the experiences translate. And because Harman uses the same design criteria for their consumer headphones and loudspeakers, you basically uh, have a one-to-one -one translation from professional to consumer so that the consumer will hear a pretty accurate representation of what the artist or producer heard uh, through their monitors or through their, their AKG 300 headphones.